Good morning, Summer Australian United. It's good to be with you again on Wednesday the 17th of June. Trust that you had a, a good weekend um, and that yesterday your youth is restored. With Youth Day, you're feeling uh, okay and doing okay despite the many challenges during COVID. Do you trust that you well? Bring you greetings from my family. Um, and we are all doing well in the Lord, so, so thank you. So today, just to let you know that uh, things are going well with our community. Please do let us know um, if you are facing challenges. But from what we are hearing and interacting with our people, uh, people are managing okay. Um, children, uh, the school realities and so on. Teachers, parents, managing to engage and continue with what is required. Then also hope that you enjoyed the beginning of our new series on Sunday, which is the journey uh, of having our lives shaped through the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus speaking into our lives. And we did say that sometimes we'd feel uncomfortable uh, through this journey because it is such a challenging, challenging passage, Matthew 5 through to 7, the real core of Jesus' teaching. So I hope you're looking forward to it and applying these, um, this way of life that Jesus has called us to live. We touched on Sunday on, on some important issues. But before we go there, just to say that COVID care, the fund uh, is going well. We're grateful for your giving. We're grateful for your tithing, friends, for what you're doing for God during this time. The way we're being able to reach out. Hope you're hearing from the testimonies from the people in the townships themselves, how they're being touched by what you're doing. Of course, bringing food parcels is still the easiest for us. If you do bring food parcels to our home, then we are able to um, take them out and we don't have to go and buy. But we will also use funds for that as well as supporting small businesses, etc. And we're also extending pastoral call by me being in the office now, uh, three days a week. So I'm in the office on Tuesdays, on Wednesdays and on Fridays um, in the mornings from 9 till 12. Um, but do please call before you come in. If you want to just come in for a chat, please sanitize, please wear your mask. Um, you can sit opposite me and we can pray together. I can encourage you in some way, or if you want to deliver goods, you can also do it to the office now. So just to let you know about that, that I am, I am here. Um, but please do phone before you come, because you might not find me here. So my cell is 083-797-3402. I do get called out to work uh, elsewhere. So please do give me a call, not on the phone line, rather on my cell phone, just to check that I'm here, so that you won't be disappointed. So um, on Sunday, yeah, we spoke about blessing. Who, who are the blessed ones in a harsh world? And when we spoke about blessing, we said there's a, a today reality of blessing. God blesses those who are obedient. There's a future day, one day. We know we will be with him one day and where all will be well. No more tears, no more sadness, no more sin. The devil taken, taken care of fully and finally. So we look forward to one day. Then there's unexpected blessing. God loves to pour out his blessing on unexpected people. People we wouldn't think would be blessed, but he blesses and he, of course, determines those who will be blessed. So, to continue with a deep sense of God's blessing, I wanted to let you know also, and to continue with this theme of Matthew 5 to 7, that my uh, batch of my books have arrived here in the Bay. So, the best is yet to come. And just to let you know that they are available, if you want to purchase one, you can pop into the office. Um, so, just to the, the author's intent, the book has been written to engage both the experienced believer and the skeptical unbeliever. The author shares some stories from his own life and closes each chapter with reflections and insights gleaned from his daily walk with his dog. Although this book contains teaching elements, it is first and foremost a thought-provoking conversation with you, the reader, one South African to another. So for the midweek message today, I'm going to read uh, an extract from the book, and it comes from uh, page 103. So it ties in with this journey of deeper discipleship we're going on in Matthew 5 to 7. We touched, it, touched on the careful use of money um, on, on Sunday. Uh, we, there's that warning to the unrepentant, wealthy oppressor. And here's a, a story from Jesus which has a twist in the tale. As Jesus approached Jerusalem towards the end of his ministry, there was a growing expectation that the kingdom of God would appear at any minute and that his followers would be rid of Roman repression once and for all. 
understanding their unrealistic expectations, Jesus told them a fascinating story about the timeless theme of money. In the story, a new ruler went off to have his position of authority verified at headquarters, only to return at a later unspecified date. Before departing, he gave each of his ten servants the same amount of money, about three months' worth of salary, with these specific instructions. This comes from Luke chapter 19, verse 13. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. The first servant managed a thousand percent return on his master's money. The second managed 500 percent. These two had done really well and were both duly rewarded for their diligence. Luke 19, 16 to 19. Because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of ten and five in bracket cities, respectively. Wisely, Jesus further explained that that, that new ruler turned out to be evil. Does that sound familiar anyway? Because he knew his followers would experience corrupt political leadership, sometimes leading to painful, unnecessary currency downgrades. We know this reality, don't be friends. So, nevertheless, the expectations of his kingdom would remain the same forever for every servant-hearted follower. And here are three little bullet points. These requirements of servant-hearted followers to prove trustworthy in small things, to take risks of faith, to not play it safe. The story Jesus told has a twist in the tale which is directed at followers who choose to play it safe out of fear. The third servant did nothing with his entrusted money. As a result, it was taken away and given to the most productive servant. It turns out then that to play it safe doesn't involve faith at all. Clearly, the expectations of our soon returning king are that we be wisely industrious and faithfully productive in his kingdom. And then the final little part with uh, the walk with the dog goes like this. There is an expectant taste of spring in the air as the dog and I walk along the shoreline of the bay in the late afternoon. The sea is quiet with a little swell and not much more than a light breeze touches our faces. When we reach one of the lookout spots along the boardwalk, we pause to sit for a while to absorb the splendor of the gift of another day coming to a close. As my eyes scan the shimmering sea surface for any marine life, a spout of spray lands about a quarter of a way across the horizon, marking the presence of a southern right whale. Aren't those just those beautiful, magnificent creatures? Each year, these beautiful marine mammals, mammals migrate from the freezing waters of Antarctica to find a mate, give birth, and nurture their young in our warmer waters. Unfortunately, in the past, these beautiful beasts were hunted in our bay. As if to let me know this whale is in good spirits, it breathtakingly breaches, lifting its head and part of its colossal body out of the water in a farewell salute before crashing back and continuing on its course to the deep. As the dog and I sit in companionable silence, I am struck by how much these brave, playful, gentle giants of the deep have to teach us about the servant lifestyle in South Africa. They continue to trust us with their vulnerable young each year, even though there was a time when we badly abused them. And then I close with Philippians 4, verse 4 to 5. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Shall we pray? Father, thank you for your powerful grace. Thank you, Lord, that you are always with us. Thank you that you go before us, even in troubled times like these. Thank you, Lord, that the requirements of the servant lifestyle remain the same. That you call us to a living, abundant, beautiful faith. Lord, may we live this faith during COVID-19. May we live it to the full. We ask your blessing on everyone. May we be those who are unexpectedly blessed by your living grace, by your presence. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, have a beautiful, beautiful day. May you be encouraged in the Lord. May you always be thankful and rejoicing in His presence. He is a wonderful, gracious Father. And I look forward to seeing you soon and going on this journey with you through Matthew 5 through to 7. Bless you.
We love you. Look forward to seeing you. Goodbye now.